Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be answering a question that has come in. And I chose this question, which came in through the website, because it's very relevant because we're going through a lot of changes, technological changes, and people are concerned about maybe their skills are going to get outdated, maybe they need to change direction, the world is changing so fast, people are looking inwards and thinking, how can they show up in the world and make a living? while also doing what they are dharmically connected to, which is what they're good at, what maybe they have some lineage connection to, or some enthusiasm about, and do they need to maybe get new skills? Do they need to discover more hidden skills within themselves? So here we go. And the question came in and the subject was finding direction in the world using mindfulness. And I won't name the person for privacy reasons. So this anonymous person says, hello, Arana, I hope you're well. I wanted to reach out to you because I recently came across your story you went from acting into mindfulness and therapy and advanced meditation, and it really struck a chord with me. It's inspiring to see someone take a brave leap following a deeper call. I imagine you must have faced moments of uncertainty, yet something led you to choose this path over staying in acting. For me, while I can find acceptance in my current job, it's a field that relies heavily on technology and it doesn't always feel like a natural fit. I'm also drawn in other directions that feel closer to my heart, like dancing, filmmaking, music, meditation, philosophy, spending time in nature. I often wonder how to truly align with one without feeling like I'm missing out or compromising. How did you find clarity in your journey? What made it feel right for you to make the shift? Following my creative pursuits would mean saying no to a financial security that my job provides. This creates a lot of tension in me. How did you find the courage to trust a new path, even when it meant stepping into the unknown? What helped you feel grounded in that choice? If you have any guidance, please, I would love to hear from you. Well, thank you, anonymous person, for writing in. It takes a lot of bravery to, to do that, to write. And if anybody else has some burning questions that they would like answers to, you can always contact me through my website, aranashields.com. And if I think that it connects with something that the collective wants to download and know more about, I might pick it to do a video on. And this one is very timely. In the collective, a lot of people are re-evaluating how they can be in the world, how they can add value in the world be happy. And there's a lot of confusion and a lot of unknown. And so I'll answer these questions. It must have taken a lot of courage and uncertainty in those moments. Yes, I personally made a big move from being successful as an actress into going back to college and, and studying psychotherapy, hypnotherapy, mindfulness. And I did that because I was sensitive to listening to what my heart wanted. And sometimes when we get very busy, 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 we can just kind of discard what the heart wants. 
and my heart is connected to a lineage of meditation masters, of gurus. And I think I tried to suppress that side and I'd managed to do it for a long time and got swept up in a delightful industry. The film industry keeps you busy. If you find work in it, you're traveling around, you're meeting creative people, you don't get much time to sleep. So if you have other pursuits, sometimes you just put them on pause. And I really want to make sure that people understand that we're living in a collective consciousness which encourages diversity of talents. It used to be if Aaron is an actress, she has to stay as an actress her whole life. If Aaron is a therapist, she has to stay as a therapist her whole life. If an anonymous person is working in technology, he has to stay in technology his whole life. This is an old paradigm. We're moving into more eclectic times where people can pick and mix and create different industries, actually, where diversity of experience is a plus, transferable skills. And so, yes, I left acting because I also have diversity in my being, which is also meditation and psychology and animal enthusiasm and and interspecies communication. We're not just one thing and we don't need to box ourselves in. We can bring little elements from all different things. And so if we're brave enough to be fully ourself, that's not going to be, I um, am just working in technology, or I am just a therapist, or I am just my label. We're not going to be just a label. And that's okay, because we can show up at whatever job we choose to do and pull in skills from all over the place. So even though now, I have the bravery to step away from acting and I'm doing therapy, meditation, interspecies communication. My acting experience helps me show up on camera, helps me present. So it's not either or. So having the bravery to be Fully yourself means you're not going to have to make a choice of either or. And I think that the industry is changing, the work industry is changing to understand that people are diverse human beings and to encourage them to bring other parts of themselves into the, the work environment. Very progressive industries encourage that. And so... I had the bravery to integrate other aspects that I wasn't focusing on and to not fully know for a while how that would pan out. So when I left the film industry, I had my heart space opening up to nature, opening up to meditation, opening up to animals more. And I didn't have that, the time to do that with such a busy acting career. So yes, took a very brave choice to pause. And my pause went on for three years. And I had the luxury of having some savings. So I could have a pause. But yes, as those savings started to dwindle, it can get a little bit nerve-wracking, especially if you're trying to push yourself to figure it out in a certain timeline. But the bravery to just trust that nature's going to show us the way, show us the path. And everybody's situation is different. 
And so use common sense. Don't just run through your same savings or leave a job that that enables you to function and pay your bills. You don't need to just throw it all away. Use common sense. Do your budgeting. See how you can make it work. As long as you can have a roof over your head, eat, have a little bit of savings, you can give yourself the space to kind of go inwards and figure yourself out and integrate other aspects and see what industries might be emerging that can utilize the whole of you or part of you. You can also be something by day and something by night, you know. You can make one thing your primary bread and then another thing is just for fun. So you can come up with creative solutions so that your heart space can enjoy the whole of you. And it's going to be very different depending on you and and you're very unique. But it is important to pause and reflect and have the courage to be fully yourself because other people may be invested in you not changing. They may be invested in you not discovering and integrating other aspects. That can be terrifying or maybe your financial situation would change and that upsets the people around you. And so you do need the bravery to just Put your being first in a sensible way, making sure that you can take care of yourself or if you have dependents and you have a family, like don't just blow it all up. And then a creative solution can arise within the pause. And yes, it was it was very concerning and terrifying for me for certain moments when I didn't know whether I would figure it out (laughs) when I was wandering in the in the park and great having celestial experiences and meditating and going on a very enlightening journey. But yeah, the bills do need to get paid and you do need to make sure that you don't just become very reclusive unless that's your Dharma and very few people are fully like reclusive. And so I don't know what your timeline will be. It might be very different. Just dot the I's, cross the T's. Dot the I's, cross the T's. That means be practical. Spirituality has a practical element to it. So although the heart space might love to do a long meditation retreat, it might love to to go traveling around. It might love to, to do all these things. We must take take care of ourselves. We must be able to make sure that we don't get chucked out for not paying our rent or not be able to, to send the kids to school because we can't afford to anymore. A lot of spirituality is getting skill in life while also having the time to have a stillness practice. For most of us, we're householders. We're people that have lives and show up in the world and move around and interact with people. And we're not going to go off into the Himalayas and disappear into a cave and wear ash all over our bodies and and be immune to snake venom. We're not all going to do that. For the majority of us, we need to dot our I's, cross our T's, make sure that we're taking care of our life so that we can relax into our practice, our spiritual practice. And and having a routine can be very helpful because sometimes when you leave an industry or you give yourself a pause, it, it you can go into this blurry place where you don't get any scheduling. And so for me, in order to get the things done that I need to do, I look at Ayurveda and I see, well, what is nature doing at different times? Well, I'm a mammal, so 
my gut bacteria is most active at 12 because it's linked to the sun. So I'm going to have my biggest meal at 12. The sun goes down in the evening. So I come out off my devices a couple of hours before it's really, really bedtime so that my system can slow down. And you can look into this and I can do another video on it, but Ayurveda really helps structure your life so you can have a yogic lifestyle, which can then promote your success in the relative world because there's certain times of the day where you're going to be more energetic naturally. Nature's going to support you to be more energetic in those times and it's going to support you in slowing down in other times. So if you kind of sync up to that, then you, you, you get help of nature. And so I get up at 5.30. That might be really awful for some people. Then I do my yoga practices and meditation practices, some massage of the body with Ayurvedic oils, some yoga. I run a Zoom meditation which is an advanced meditation Zoom for Siddhas, that's going for a while. But usually I'm finished around, what time? Eight. And then I'll go for a walk. And because it's really helpful to go out into the morning light, so your system knows, okay, it sets your body clock. And then come back and start work at nine. And I'm usually in bed at 10 p.m. So if you are thinking of changing careers or you're leaving your job, try and schedule out your day. If you feel like Ayurvedic times resonate with you, use that. Just because you'll find that if you don't, time just kind of dissolves. And nature can really help us figure out who we are. You can go for your morning walk. The light can hit your eyes. And you're not trying to figure it out. But as you walk and then you sit down at nine, there might be a knowing or an enthusiasm or things that come through. And when your body's in a rhythm and it's connected to nature, you will know. You get confused when you're going against nature. And nature has a plan for you. And nature understands all of who you are. It created you. It knows your talents, or your weaknesses, why you're here in the world. Just like a bee knows, I must go now to, to go to that flower. Just like an eagle knows. I need to circle around here and look for a rodent. Syncing up, connecting with nature will help you understand how you're going to show up in the world and who you are and why you're here. And as you settle into a rhythm and a routine, you'll get the answers and it won't feel like so horrifying and terrifying and and confusing and lost and anxiety provoking because you get support of nature to be fully who you are you're not alone you're connected to everything and the people you need to speak to you will speak to and the talents that you don't know that you have will become apparent and anything that's not life supporting will fall away. And so this is all going to happen and you will get clarity. And so, yes, I did face moments of uncertainty, but in the meditation, in the connection to nature, I became more and more and more and more certain because I had support spent time walking, spent time in nature, lots of meditation, taking care of myself. And personally, I'm not a person that has an addictive personality and is into drugs or anything like that. And I've 
kind of grew out of a phase of partying until like 4 a.m. So it kind of makes you think more clearly and understand yourself more. <laughs> Although it's fine to go through a phase of that, right? So let me continue. How did you find that clarity in your journey? Well, I didn't listen to what other people told me I had to do or what they wanted me to do because I understand that people have agendas. I understand that my acting agent has an agenda. My manager has an agenda. My boyfriend at the time had an agenda. So people want you to fit into their life because they get secondary benefits from you showing up in a certain way and then if you show up differently they might try and manipulate or convince you to to not do what you actually want to do and so you have to have your street smarts and understand whether somebody has your best interests in mind and what their agenda is and ultimately the most important thing for you to do is to show up as yourself and nature wants you to do that and it's evolutionary for the whole so even if people think they don't want you to change or they they don't like you showing up in a different way it's so evolutionary in the long run because suppressing who you are suppressing your talents doing things that are not fully you can cause so much stress in the system. And that's in your own system, but in the ecosystem as a whole. And so it's important for us to celebrate, well, first discover everybody's talents and then cultivate everybody's talents and then really, really push other people's talents and let go of our agendas. And so I think that I had clarity because my personality, I mean, we all have dysfunctions in our personality, but my personality luckily is quite rebellious. <laughs> and part of the rebellion can be negative, but the positive side of the rebellious personality that I have is I don't like people telling me what to do. And I just do it my way. And so, yes, there was a lot of noise. But I think I got clarity because I just do my own thing. And it got hard at some points. People said, you're mad. What are you doing? You're committing financial suicide. You don't have to struggle. Why are you going to do this now? Like, makes no sense. Because I was on the up, in, especially in India at the time. And so that happened. Also, I noticed that my body was exhausted and I was getting sick and I needed to sort myself out. And um, that's another video. What made it feel right to make a shift? I have thought about this. And I don't want to just give you an answer that comes from my mind or my ego. And so I'm going to pause on that. I don't know whether it was something astrological that happened, but when I turned around 30, something happened. And I started to get a real desire to go inward that I couldn't suppress. And I don't know what that was and why that was. It just rose up within me. And part of me tried to shut it down. And the part of me that tried to shut it down tried to shut it down for many years. And so I was fluctuating between wanting to, to meditate and, and wanting to go back into the film industry, but not going back into the film industry. And this went on for many years and I had split energy, but I was lucky, I guess. And I managed to stay on, on path. And so I managed to make a shift. 
And in order to do these videos now, in order to download the information I download now, I to get to that level, I think I had to go inwards massively and, 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 and med meditate a lot and do a lot of advanced meditation practices and become a, a meditation teacher and study psychotherapy, study hypnosis, study all these things. I needed to do that so that you guys can get the benefit of it. Um, and then it's just an incremental growth. And a lot of things happen. And then after, I don't know, over a decade, here we are. So, um, how did you find the courage to trust a new path, even when it, when it meant stepping into the unknown? The unknown is exciting. We can reframe the unknown from being terrifying to the unknown being exciting. And so if we scan through our personality and it's afraid of change, we can just witness that. Oh, isn't that interesting? Part of my personality is afraid of change. For me, I was very lucky that my personality kind of thrives off new experiences and unknown and being self-employed. I managed to get excited about, oh, can I, can I pay my mortgage? I had a mortgage. Can I get this role? Everything was unknown and nothing was safe. And so my personality seemed to be okay with that level of unknown. It found it, it found it exciting. Um, that's not going to be the case for everybody though. And so how do people get secure with the unknown? Well, meditation can really help you because the relative world, what happens in the world is always changing and it is always unknown and curveballs can happen. And so the only place that's known is the transcendental space, the space beyond the relative world. And so if we're connected to that, we're firmly established in that, then we can trust, oh, I'll figure it out because I'm not getting my sense of security from a place that's changing. I'm not getting my security from anywhere other than myself. And so it's so important to figure out how to connect and go inwards and cut out the noise so that you can feel more grounded inside yourself even though the outside world is always going to change. And we can figure it out. If we show up and we're, if we take care of our body, if we notice the weaknesses in our personality, are dedicated to improving our, um, ourselves. When I say improving ourselves, I don't mean the, the big self. I mean the personality, like understanding how we can get skill with our minds and our fears and we take care of our body we can function in life and we can be successful and so uh, you can be grounded in the choices you make if you're taking care of yourself so thank you so much and if any of you are looking for direction, trust that nature has all the answers for you. Pause, meditate, take care of yourself, exercise, go to bed, sleep a good night's sleep, eat good food, and the answers will come and you will light up. It's like you'll light up saying, hey, how can I be of service? And nature will be so excited and be like, yay, I'm going to give you this, 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 and this to do because I know you're talented at this and I know this person needs to meet you. And oh my God, nature gets so excited when we show up, when we just say, yes, okay, how can I help? Because we're here to help. We're here to be of service. 
And once we tap into that and figure it out, you'll get a lot of enthusiasm and energy. So I pray that everybody watching this video is fully themselves unapologetically, that they get in sync with nature, that the enthusiasm rushes through their system, that they're able to find stillness in a place within themselves, despite all the chaos in the world, and that they go out and create and meet people and spread who they are and really love their uniqueness and tweak things in their personality that they need to tweak and don't get too bothered about other people's personalities and whether they're tweaking them or not.